Hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, it's part seven of our Toys and Joys 1929 Ford Steak Bed Truck Build. Now some of you who tuned in just for the wheel tutorial for these toys may be a little confused by that intro of being part seven. However, this has been a seven part series making the Toys and Joys 1929 Ford um, as a confidence builder for those who want to get into it. And today's show is dedicated strictly to making the wheels for that model and it's also applicable to a lot of the other Toys and Joys models. So to start off, what we're going to need is some three quarter inch thick walnut. So I have here some three quarter inch thick walnut. Now this is the average size for most of the store-bought wheels that you get. Um, what we need to do for starters is lay out where we want our wheels to be to minimize our loss of stock. So I have my compass set up here to a three and a quarter inch radius and I'm just going to mark where I want these to be using as little stock or grouping them as tightly as I can. So this particular model, the 1929 Ford, requires six wheels. So I will mark out six wheels on this. And what we want to do right here in the center, as soon as we mark our hole, you want to very carefully put a center punch there and punch that hole. So mark out as many neat wheels as you need. Well, the first step in this process is to drill out the center hub. And for that, we're going to use an inch and a quarter Forstner bit. Now that is why we center punched all of these to give us the reference as to where to drill that hole. So I have set a depth stop to let the hole be drilled at three eighths of an inch deep, leaving exactly half of the material when I'm done. So you want to do that to each one of your wheels. Now something I'm going to point out that is specific to this model and that is that it has dually wheels at the back of the truck. In this case you don't need to drill this center hub for the inner wheels so two of them you can just leave plain. Well at this point it's time to rough cut our wheels and there are several ways that you can do it. Um, you can use a circle cutter jig on a bandsaw. You would need a small blade for that. You can rough cut them on the scroll saw. That works as well. You can use a circle cutter or a knuckle buster as I like to call them like this. But I find this provides a lot of waste material. You don't really want that. Um, so the best method that I have found for this is a good quality three inch hole saw that will actually yield you a blank that is 1 16th larger than what you need. So what we want to do for each one of these wheels is we're going to drill halfway through and then flip the board over and complete the, uh, the, the through drilling from the opposite side. It's just easier on the whole saw, there's less heating, that sort of thing. Um, as well, guys, please don't try to hold this with your hands. Um, a larger piece like this isn't so bad, but the smaller pieces will really cause some damage if it should grab, because you won't have the strength to hold it. So just use your fence to help you hold that. It'll just keep it from spinning, should it grab and try to spin. So either way, let's get these drilled. Halfway through, flip it over, and then finish the drilling. Well, at this point, you should have something that looks like this. Now, I know some of you are going to look at these and say, number one, why is there seven wheels? It's personal preference. For me, I always make one spare in case there's something that happens that for some reason, one of the wheels gets damaged. At least I have a backup. Um, for this amount of walnut, it's much better to have this much waste if all the wheels work out than it is to have to go through the process of the setup and everything all over again. You may also notice that all of these hubs are drilled. And what happened to not having to drill the hubs for the interior wheels of the dualies? This is personal preference. I prefer to make all the wheels the same. Then there's no being... Um, 
cemented into having to use certain wheels for certain applications. They're all the same. I can use them for whatever I like, but I just wanted to point out to you that you don't have to drill those center hubs of the inner wheels. At this point now, what we need to do is we need to take these over to the lathe and we're going to mount them on a pen mandrel. So I have four of these on the mandrel at a time. If you want to put more, you can. I prefer to do them in smaller batches. It just makes them easier to deal with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the speed down on the lathe um, to about the same speed that you would have if you were roughing out a piece. And just using, I'm going to be using easy wood tools for this, but you can use your roughing gouge, you can use your spindle gouge, whatever you like, but we're going to turn these down to their final dimension of two and three quarter. Remember, the whole saw only leaves one sixteenth of an inch here uh, of play. So don't go crazy with deep cuts. You wanna take light passes and get them as close to two and three quarters as you can. And once you get them all turned to their final size of two and three quarter, you can remove them. And we now need to work on individual wheels. So mount just one wheel onto your pen mandrel. Well, at this point, we need to put a couple of marks on our wheel. And what we're going to do is measuring here at the front, we're going to come in one eighth of an inch right there. And the same thing with the middle. We're going to come in one eighth of an inch. Now at those marks, we can continue the pencil lines all the way around just to give us a reference point. And now what we want to do is now you can use whatever you want. You can use a scraper. You can use uh, a skew chisel, whatever you like. But we're going to come in here and we're going to cut a kerf here that is about, about, I'm going to say just over a sixteenth of an inch deep, close to, closer to an eighth, um, but it's personal preference here. So let me just show you what I mean. There we go, just like that. I hope you can see that. Uh, once you get that done, there's not much really to do there with that front face. I think I'm gonna make those a little deeper. They're still a little shallow for my liking because we need to contour the raised area that's left. So let me cut these a little deeper and then I'll show you how to contour that. Now you don't need a lot of contour on the front, but basically what we're going to do is we're going to round over each side of that raised area. I'm just going to use a detail chisel for that. You can use whatever you have. There you go. And then once you get that done, you can do the same thing with this front. Okay, so at that point, that is it for the front of the wheels contouring. So we now need to turn our attention to the treads of our wheel. So the first thing we're going to work on is the treads. So what you want to do, this is the easiest way I find, the, all of the treads, there'll be five of them in total, will be five, or sorry, half an inch wide. So take a ruler and line up a half an inch right in the middle of your wheel and then place a mark one eighth of an inch all the way along. And there you go. There is our markings for our five treads and we can transfer them all the way around our wheel. 
So the easiest way that I have found to mark these treads or to cut these treads is with a skew chisel using the toe of the skew in this fashion. So let me just show you that here. So we'll just line it up with our mark and we'll just take the cut. They don't have to be very deep. And that is all she wrote. That is the treads of our wheel. So at this point, there's one last thing to do here, and that is to round off each of these outside side edges of the wheel. And at this point, you can give the wheel a sanding all over. Don't forget your dust mask and your dust collection. And there you go. That is the completed tire. Now, whether you are making front wheels, back wheels, dualies, it doesn't matter. The process that I've just shown you for these wheels is exactly the same. So you can now carry on and make the other five wheels for your project. If you're not making the 29 Ford, then obviously you just make as many as you require. And before long, you end up with six of these. Now, for now, we can put these aside. We need to work on the hubs of the two front tires. So we'll put these aside. And what I have is the pattern from the 1929 uh, set of plans. And this is for the, uh, the wheel drilling template, if you will. It is basically uh, 3 8 holes, five of them that are 72 degrees apart each. So I have used some spray adhesive and I have uh, stuck it here to a piece of quarter inch MDF. The very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to punch the center here and drill a quarter inch through hole in that template. Now the next thing that we're going to do is take it over to the drill press and at each one of these points we will center punch it and drill a 3 8 through hole at each one of the marked areas. And that would be all she wrote for our template and that's what it is. It's a drilling jig for our hubs. So now what I have is a piece of maple. It is 3 8 of an inch uh, thick. I, I think it's 2 inches wide, something like that. But as long as it's an inch and a quarter wide, that's all we need. Because what we want to do is I've laid out some marks here to draw an inch and a quarter circle right in the middle here of each one. So I'm going to line this up and draw two inch and a quarter circles. These will be our hubs because we know that we drilled an inch and a quarter Forstner bit hole. So these have to fit inside. There we go. So now the next thing that we want to do is center punch both of these and drill a quarter inch through hole in the middle of each one of those circles that we just drew. And with those two holes drilled, we can head over to the drill press and I'll show you what to do next. Well, the very first thing that we're going to do is I'm going to take our drilling template or drilling jig, I'm going to line up that center quarter inch hole with one of the quarter inch holes in our 3 8 thick maple and I'm going to push this quarter inch brass rod into here. Now you don't have to use a brass rod, it's just what I have, it's what I use. Um, if you have a piece of dowel or even a quarter inch drill bit that will work just fine. Anything to hold this in the middle and keep it from moving. The next thing you want to do is hold your template as still as you can and drill one of, it doesn't matter which one, lower your a 3 8 bit down into one of the 3 8 holes that you drilled, lower it down into there and drill a through 3 8 hole in your maple. Okay. So now we need to keep our template from rotating or moving while we drill the other holes. So I have a scrap of 3 8 dowel 
and I'm just going to push that into this hole and down into the maple. Now that is not moving, it's not spinning. And at this point now, you can drill using your template the other four holes through the maple. And obviously you'll need to make two of those. Now at this point in time, this is what we have. And that inch and a quarter circle that we drew is not by accident. That is the size that coincides with the hole that we drilled in our wheels. So that is the size our hub needs to be. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this over to the scroll saw and I'm going to cut all the way around outside of, probably about an eighth of an inch outside of that line on both of those pieces. And now we head back over to the lathe. Well, here's what we need to do now. I have this piece back on our pen mandrel and we are going to turn it to our inch and a quarter dimension. Um, the secret here is light, light passes. You don't want to be gouging this thing because if it catches, well, you can kiss it goodbye, put it that way. Um, these can be finicky. Sometimes I get one of these that suddenly decides that it wants to leave the lathe in pieces. So please guys, get that face shield on while you're turning. Uh, I see too many guys online not wearing them and honestly, you guys are asking for trouble. Either way, I wanna get this turned down now to that inch and a quarter diameter. Well, that looks pretty close about there. So I think what I want to do is I'm going to get one of my wheels and slide it over the pen mandrel and just make sure that it's the right size. Yeah, that looks good right about there. That slides right over that. So we're good to go. Now, the next thing that we need to do is take a measurement of the depth of the hole that is left after turning your wheel. And in my case, it's a quarter of an inch. So what we need to do is take a ruler and mark a quarter of an inch here on our hub. I'm actually going to go just a little less than that. And we need to now taper this thing from the inside edge right here, tight to our um, tight to our pen mandrel, and we need to kind of taper it back until we reach that quarter inch mark. this point now we can just give this a sanding and once we get it sanded up I'll show you what we end up with and what you end up with is this now when you take it doesn't look like much I know but when you take it and put it in a wheel check that out Isn't that great that was fantastic I got a little bit of a bird there there we go that little chip get out of there just like that and that is our front wheels complete. So I'm gonna turn a second one of these hubs here and that will be it for those. And then I guess I'll turn my attention to the hubs of the rear wheel and show you how to do those. Well, it's now time to make the center hubs of the rear wheels. So what I've done is I've taken two of the wheels and this inch and a quarter hole that we drilled, I have deepened it to make it so that it is half an inch deep. 
that's no big deal. Just take it over to the drill press, line your bit up. That initial hole that you drilled will act as a guide for you and you can drill it down the rest of the way to get your half inch depth. The good news is here that it uses the exact same template. It's just a little bit of a different process. So what I've done is I have still marked out here, this is on some half inch thick maple this time. I've marked out my inch and a quarter circle to give us a guideline for cutting at the scroll saw before turning and et cetera, et cetera. But what we're going to do for starters is I'm going to line it up against my fence here and we are going to drill an inch and a sixteenth diameter Forstner bit hole just leaving one eighth of an inch of material at the bottom of this um, blank. Now without moving the position of our fence we're going to change our bit to a quarter inch diameter and we will drill a through hole on both of these right in the center there where our Forstner bit has left its mark. Now just like we did before with a 3 8 diameter bit and our template, we're going to flip this over now but we're only going to drill through until it pierces into this hole that we've just drilled. So don't go too crazy. And I would suggest placing a plug of some kind in here. I may even turn a maple plug just to sit inside so that we back up the inside of these holes so that the bit doesn't blow it out. But either way, that's what we need to do. Turn it over and drill those five holes. And just like we did with the other ones, you can insert that 3 8 inch dowel into that hole just to keep it from spinning and now drill the rest of them all the way around that hub. <clears throat> Excuse me, that hub. And on the back, what you end up with is something like this, but on the front, it looks like this. So we can do the other one. We're going to cut outside the line here, outside that inch and a quarter perimeter, and then we're going to take it over to the lathe. Over here at the lathe, back on the pen mandrel again, this could not be simpler, guys. At this point in time, just turn it round and then turn it to a final dimension of an inch and a quarter. Please, light, light, light passes. Do not gouge this thing. These little cutouts here, if they catch, this thing is gone. And because of that as well, actually, you know what? Not because of that. Because you're working on a lathe, get that face mask on, guys. Get the shield on. Either way, let's get this turned up and see how we do. And once you get that turned down to its proper size, we'll just give this thing a sanding and then we can test fit it in our wheel. And at this point, your hub should look something like this. Kind of weird looking, but a lot of this is hidden inside the wheel. And once you install it in there, this is what you end up with. And that looks pretty darn awesome. So. There you go. There is the rear hub. I'm going to turn the second one here and finish that off. And then all that's really left to do at that point is mount the wheels on the truck. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Well, it's now time before we can install these on the vehicle, we need to glue the hubs in. Um, I would suggest very strongly using your pen mandrel to do that. And what you need the pen mandrel for is to align your pieces. Uh, you want those holes to line up perfectly. So bottom line here is take your wheel. Um, even for your dualies, you can place your inner dually on there. You can place a little bit of glue around 
the edge of your tire, slide your next one onto there and push it firmly in place and then use some glue on your hubs. Use it sparingly guys. We don't want a lot of squeeze out here. And then you slide it on and everything will align perfectly. You can even use your brass hold down nut or your locking nut to clamp everything in place and then let the hubs completely dry there. Well, with everything dried up, it's now time to mount the wheels. And if you remember way back in, I think it was part one when I made the frame, I drilled the holes a little differently than what the plans called for. Um, I drilled a 5 16th hole in the rear axle all the way through and in the front axle I drilled a quarter inch hole. Um, the reason for this is these patterns call for uh, store-bought axle pegs and I, I like to make all the parts myself. So I also prefer to have, when it comes to the wheels, I prefer to have a solid axle. So the rear wheels are just going to be mounted on a piece of quarter inch dowel. They will protrude just a tiny little bit out of our hubs and they will be sanded round to give them a nice soft profile in the center there. And they'll just be glued on. I also like to use in between the wooden axle and our wheel, a quarter inch flat washer. That will just help it to spin nicely and you know, stop it from binding or squeaking the wood on wood there. So that's really nothing special. Um, it's, it's just a simple little glue up. But now the front wheels are something different. And what I have done is I have taken a length of quarter inch dowel because, um, because of the differential that was cut in the front axle, it was impossible to get a through axle. So I can't have a solid one piece axle. I have to have some kind of pins. So I have taken a piece of quarter inch dowel and a piece of 3 8 inch dowel. Now this 3 8 dowel is 3 8 of an inch long. I have drilled into it by 1 8 of an inch and glued it onto the end of my wooden quarter inch dowel here just like that. Once this is dry, all I did was chuck it up into a drill and using some sandpaper, I sanded this to be a pin. I made my own axle pegs, but I made them to be quarter of an inch. The reason for that is my pen mandrel is a quarter of an inch, so it just coincides with everything. Now, in order to get these front wheels to spin nicely on this quarter inch pin, I have actually drilled this out to 17 64ths, which is 1 64th of an inch bigger than this pin, which allows them to spin quite nicely. All we're going to do is the same thing as what we would with the back axles. We're going to place that quarter inch flat washer there and we will place a little bit of glue in the hole of our axle. Do not place it on your pin. If you place it on the pin and you get squeeze out or it smears along, it could glue your wheel onto your pin and then it won't turn. But let me just show you here what we're going to do and how we're going to glue those on. So the first thing you want to do is a dry fit. So sit your washer in place, just like this, and then sit your wheel on there. Make sure that your axle sits flush. You don't want it too tight and that your tire spins. That's it. Okay, so now you're happy with that. As I said, you just place a little bit of glue in that hole. You don't need a lot. And now we can take our pin and our washer. We'll place it into the hole and we will rotate it down to coat it with glue all the way around. And once we get it coated, there, that's it. We'll let it sit there and that can now dry. That's it guys. That's the wheel installed. Uh, it's that simple. So install your tires on the truck and uh, well, I guess we'll call this one done. And there you have it. Making toy wheels 
or the finale, part seven, of our Toys and Joys 1929 Ford State Bed Truck Build. Guys, this series, I, I never really had it in my mind throughout this series as to how many parts I wanted this to be. I also never had a limit to how many parts it could be. So I think we did all right with seven parts considering the amount of information that's packed into this thing. Um, from the methods of how to make the parts and how everything goes together to the plans, installing the wheels, making the wheels. There's an awful lot of information here and hopefully, as I've said several times throughout this series, it will give you the confidence that you need to take this model on. Um, this is a load of fun and you know what, honestly, sit it in your office uh, as a display piece or what have you and you know what, the sense of pride you get for making one of these is unmatched. It really is. It's spectacular. They're really impressive builds and all you need to do is take your time. If you're unsure of how to make one of these parts, check through the videos here. There's seven parts that you can go through and get the piece that you need and watch how it's made or hear how it's explained. Guys, honestly, if this doesn't build your confidence and get you motivated to try one of these models, I honestly don't know what will. This is one of the more simple builds of the Toys and Joys uh, plans, we'll call them. and. It's a load of fun. It really is. And even if you screw up a couple parts or it doesn't look perfect or whatever, the amount of knowledge and experience that you gain by making one is priceless. It really, really is. It doesn't have to be exactly like this one. I've been doing this a long time. So don't compare it to me. Compare it to how you feel about yours. And as long as you're proud of it, then that's all that matters. And honestly, you should be proud of every project you make because as long as you learned something from that project, then it was a total success. Now, one of the coolest things I like about these, normally, in a lot of cases, I keep my builds unfinished when it comes to my models. Some of them I do add finishes. It depends on my mood. This one here, because of the beautiful woods, the cherry, the poplar, the walnut, um, it was screaming for something and because of that I hit it with some Danish oil. Check that out. That is beautiful. Guys, really, you have to give this a try. If you're sitting on the fence thinking, oh, I wish I could do that, do it. I know you can do it. I honestly know that you can do this. Follow these builds, follow the tutorials and just make one, guys, really. Do yourself a favor, make one. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this seven part series. It is a load of fun to make one and you honestly shouldn't be denying yourself. One thing I would like to point out here is the methods I have shown you today here, it's just my methods. You don't have to do it that way. And if there's a method or a way that works better for you or is easier for you or that suits the equipment that you have, then by all means, use it. The stuff I give you here on the show is nothing more than a suggestion. If you haven't already, guys, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. We have a load of fun here every Tuesday and Friday, and I hope that you're going to consider being a part of that. I hope you've enjoyed this seven-part series. I hope you're going to try this for yourself. And honestly, guys, I really hope you're going to join me again next week for yet another... Alternative Tuesdays.